Welcome back to the Chess Goals YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to go over two Blitz games that I played in the Karokan Tardikauer Defense. And both of these games, I used the exact same sacrifice. They Both games happened today, and they both got me the brilliant mark on chess.com. So here's the first game. We got e4, c6, and d4, d5. That's Karokan. After knight to d2, we always recommend taking in our Karokan course and playing knight to f6. This is called the Tardikauer. After white takes, we take with the e pawn. And what I really like about the Tardikauer is you get these interesting positions, and it's not the most common defense against knight c3 and knight to d2 on move 3. So the white opponents tend to be less likely to be well booked up in these lines. And the other thing I like about it is we tend to play the same move order every time. So we always start with bishop to d6. After white plays h3, we castle. It's always bishop d6 and then castle. And then we always play rook to e8. And this is with the check, so white blocks. Now we play knight to d7. And the plan is knight to f8. This is an interesting point. I did look at bishop to f4 in this position. I think I could maybe take advantage of white's move order. But let's not worry about that for now. I want to show you guys the sacrifice. So castle, knight goes back to f8. On to c3. Usually I do see c4 here instead of c3. And my opponent plays it on the very next move, on to c4. And now look what I'm setting up. Bishop on e6, queen on d7. They're both pointed at this pawn on h3. I'm getting ready for this sacrifice. I want bishop takes h3. And if you're a Chess Goals member and you're in our Discord server, we have a Carol Khan channel where I provide support for the Carol Khan course. And we also show some of our games. People ask questions in the Carol. A lot of our members are getting this sacrifice in their games, and it works almost every time. And usually when it doesn't work, it's still an equal position. So queen to d7 has this huge threat. Bishop takes h3. My opponent plays queen to c2. Now here I can take the pawn right away, but you can also play knight to g6, and it's almost equally as strong as bishop takes h3 in a lot of lines. I think I should have taken the pawn here first. It's a minus 2. Knight g6 is a minus 1.8. But it's still a pretty good move. And I'm threatening bishop takes h3 on the next move, and it's pretty hard to deal with. My opponent plays rook to a to d1, missing the threat. I take. And there's the brilliant mark from chess.com. Double x glam. Bishop takes h3. And white should not take the bishop back. But most people do, because if you don't take the bishop back, you see queen to g4 coming, threatening mate, and you're down a pawn. This just doesn't seem fun for white. But I find most people do take the bishop. It'd make you prove that the attack works. But after queen takes h3, I'm threatening to win the knight, and I have both bishop and queen hitting this h2 square. So if the knight moves, there could be queen to h2, checkmate, and one. My opponent plays bishop takes g6. And here, if you want to try to pause the video, there is a mate in five by force. I missed the mate in five. I played h takes g6, but see if you can find it. So the answer is queen to g4 check. The king has to move to h1 because my bishop guards h2. Now there's queen takes knight check. King moves. Check on g4. The king has to go back. Check again. The king has to go back, followed by queen to h2 mate. So there was a mate in five that I missed. Uh, I played h takes g6. We're looking at a minus eight stockfish advantage. And after queen to e2, I lifted my rook to e4, threatening rook to g4, checkmate. And after knight e5, I grabbed the knight. So at this point, we're equal in terms of minor pieces. I'm up two pawns, and I'm threatening rook to g4. My opponent played f3, and I spent a little bit of time on this position just figuring out what's the best way to finish white. And I chose queen to g3 check, and my opponent resigned. The idea is if the king goes to h1, I have rook to h4 check, followed by rook to h2 if the white queen blocks, that'll be mate in two. And if queen to g2 is played, my plan was to trade queens and take the bishop. So now I'm up a bishop and two pawns. It's a five point material advantage. So this was the Karol Khan Tardikauer straight out of the chess goals opening course. And it was a victory in only 19 moves against a 2300 player. So these courses are designed for club level players, kind of up to 2200 range. 
But what I'm showing you here is I had two games just today in the Tardic Hour, and both of them, my opponents, fell for the sacrifice on H3, and they were both less than 20 move games. So 2300s falling for this sacrifice. All right, let's go into the next game. This game starts out the same. We see knight takes e4, knight f6, this trade happens. Now I'm doing the same move order. So starting with bishop to d6, castle, rook to e8. You see here my opponent has a slightly better move order because their king is not um, lined up with the bishop on e3 and my rook on e8. So I don't have that strong move bishop to f4 like I did in game one. My opponent plays h3. And this is a really common move because black, or excuse, excuse me, white doesn't want us to play a bishop to g4. So they play h3 to prevent that. But this is where we bring the knight through and then play bishop to e6. And this is lining up the threat on h3. So I'm getting ready to play queen to d7, followed by bishop takes pawn on h3. So bishop to e3, queen to d7, queen to c2. Now this is the better line for white. If I take on h3 here, this is one of those cases where the position is actually equal. And the reason for that is because white can actually bring the queen back into defend. Um, so let's say bishop takes h3, pawn takes, queen takes h3, queen to d1 is the move. I couldn't remember if it was queen to d1 or queen to e2. But this doesn't quite work now. There's nothing better for black than the perpetual check. There's no easy rook lift because this bishop guards e4 and the knight guards h2. So black is not winning here. It's actually equal with best play going for the perpetual. So this is why I almost always play knight to g6 first if I feel my opponent is doing the optimal setup against the bishop takes h3 sack because once the knight's on g6, now we are threatening the sack. And I'm going to show you why that works. Rook a to d1. And bishop takes h3. Brilliant move. Hitting the sacrifice again. And my opponent takes, which is again a mistake. But it's already pretty close to winning for black if they don't take. Queen takes h3. Now we see bishop takes g6. In this line, I don't have the force checkmate. Because queen to g4, the king could run to f1. I took with the h-pawn. My opponent plays queen to e2, trying to bring the queen into help. But I play rook e4 threatening the mate, and my opponent just resigns right here. It's a minus 7 eval. So two games against 2300s, both in the Tardic Hour, both with the bishop takes h3. Brilliant sacrifice according to chess.com. This comes out of the Chess Goals Karo Khan course. And right now the Karo Khan course is on sale on our website. There's a link in the description, so go check that out. And we also have a Karo Khan middle game course as well. It pairs nicely with the opening course. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoy these Karo Khan miniatures, and I will see you in the next video.